Do you ever do a TIG welding pass that starts perfect, but by the end of it, it looks like it's been through a sandstorm? What if I told you the fix to this problem might have nothing to do with your settings? We need things to look like this here. We can see that the control of the overall heat input on this one is pretty good with this work here. We can see everything looks somewhat organized with a consistent stack of dimes a little bit from start to finish. We can also see everything has a perfect area of cleaning action around each pass. And we can actually see that the finish of the welding area looks nice and shiny and somewhat organized. Now, this is something that I struggled with a lot when I was first learning how to TIG weld. All of the things that we are looking at here are showing the problems that things have become too hot and overheated. But if this is you, it's all good. We're going to get you sorted out. Let's take a look at some of the reasons that this might be happening. This is something that's going to help you to understand this problem a lot more. And the first thing we're going to look at here is the cleaning action. Looking at it here, we can see that there is very little to no cleaning action. And if there is some, sometimes it can be really inconsistent from start to finish. We can see that the welding area for sure also has a really dull and gross looking finish. And in a lot of cases, we can take a look at something like this, especially towards the end of a pass. You might notice that the overall profile of the welding area is becoming sunken and hollow. Now, a lot of the time when people are experiencing this problem of overheating near the end of the pass, it's pretty common that somebody gets going with the pass with everything looking all right. But then as things heat up towards the open end of a corner or a joint, this is usually where things start to escalate and get out of hand pretty quickly. Now, what is somebody's initial reaction when they see something like this example here? I think you could look on any Facebook comment section for any welding, and you're gonna see some people saying, oh, it's just too hot. The reason that I say that this is such a stupid approach is simply because a lot of the time it may have nothing to do with your settings. I think it's kind of silly to jump to conclusions and start playing with the settings on your machine. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna troubleshoot some problems that might show you that your machine settings could be left alone. Now, it is worth mentioning that you should indeed double check and make sure that the machine settings that you are using are good to go for what the material thickness is that you are welding. For example, if I'm welding really thin stuff, obviously you're gonna be working with much less amperage. If you are welding some plate or something like that that is a little bit thicker, obviously this is gonna require more heat input. This is pretty straightforward. However, it is not just as easy as turning down the heat if you are seeing overheating occur. Here are some things that potentially could be causing this problem that are not related to settings. This is something that I teach to all of my students and this is the careful balance between two variables. The first variable is going to be your overall heat input. And the other variable that needs to match perfectly with this is the filler material amount. The heat input as well as the filler material amount that you are adding to a welding area create a very important balance that you have to maintain between these two variables. In order to control your heat, this is the most important thing that you have to pay attention to. To explain this in a simple kind of way, when we are TIG welding aluminum, you have to use a high amount of heat to obviously create an arc and create a puddle on the material. What happens is when you use this high amount of heat, it is actually compromising the base material structure. So what we do is add filler material to the mix to compromise and make up for any loss of strength. And this is something that's gonna bolster the strength of the overall welding area, obviously within reason. So because of the amount of heat that we might be using to TIG weld the aluminum, we wanna make sure that we are adding an adequate amount of filler material. And this is gonna to help to maintain the structural integrity of the welding area in the base aluminum, as well as the filler material. It's gonna help with the strength of the welding area. There are a lot of cases. Have you ever seen somebody TIG weld aluminum without using filler material? A lot of the time you're going to see something like this where we can see the base material start to crack. Obviously this is just an example here but it shows exactly what I'm talking about. This is especially easy and common to see happen when somebody has TIG welded thin aluminum material usually with like a pulse setting or something like that where they have not used filler material. This is called autogenous welding. Now like we talked about when we are adding even the slightest amount of heat to our base material this is compromising the grain structure of the aluminum base material. Remember aluminum is a really soft metal. Using filler material to counteract and control this heat input, this is going to help to bolster the strength of the welding area a little bit. And honestly, from my experience of professionally TIG welding in production for over 20 years, as well as instruction, I've never liked to do any work where I'm not using filler material. 
Like I said, not only is filler material gonna make sure that there's no cracking or anything like that within reason after welding, when you are welding, it's gonna help to control your overall heat input. Now, typically when we start to see some overheating occur, obviously this is an example that shows the heat input has gotten away from us quite a bit. We can see that things have become a little bit flat. And in this area, because the filler material is falling really short, the heat starts to increase and build up in the base material. You are then gonna start to see the overall welding area start to fall hollow and concave and then obviously at this point overheating has taken place it's really hard to turn back from this the flip side can also happen where we have too much filler material the overall heat input being used into the welding area is not going to be enough to completely blend the filler material with the base material take a look at this page in my textbook here you can see examples of this happening a lot of people might just say turn up the heat crank it up but the problem with this is that even with a larger amount of filler material it's just going to make our welding area much bigger overall if you ever experiencing either of these problems you carefully want to take a look at the balance between heat and filler used. A little less filler material for each step in a circumstance like this will allow the heat to do its job a little easier. But like I just mentioned increasing the heat overall is going to make the welding area bigger overall and this is something that you need to pay attention to as well. Somebody welding on some practice play just trying to learn how to TIG weld might not realize that working with a welding puddle or a welding pass that is too wide is actually really hard to manage. Like I talked about in my program textbook right here, I'll give recommendations on how wide of a welding lane that you want in relation to the overall thickness of the material you are using. If the welding lane or the welding width is too wide, more heat obviously is going to be required. And even with proper filler material to counteract this, having a puddle that is too wide can cause everything to overheat really quickly. I always recommend to somebody who might be experiencing this where the amount of filler material is actually balanced pretty well with the amount of heat being used but for some reason they are still dealing with overheating I typically recommend that somebody decreases the overall width of the welding lane and this is going to take that careful balance that you were able to do with a bigger pass but make it a little bit smaller and easier to manage I think you're going to notice that the same settings and the same balance between heat and filler are going to be easier to control and look much better now as you travel along with any welding passes that you are working on a practice plate or a joint or whatever travel speed being too slow slow can also be an issue. If people aren't moving quick enough with their welding speed, you can start to see things heating up overall. And this is indeed where you are going to experience overheating. Now, another reason that this can happen, honestly, is one of the most important ones. And this is something where I would actually encourage everybody out there to meticulously plan your work. That's right. One of the biggest reasons that things can become overheated is bad planning. For example, if you have something like this piece here, this is a cool sculpture piece that I did as an example in a lesson a little while ago. And I used it essentially as a lesson to teach all about overheating. If I were to do all of this welding here and not plan which way I was pushing the heat around, you could pretty much bet that by the time I got to these welding passes here on the outside, things would be smoking hot. Those passes would all absolutely overheat even with the most perfect settings on my machine. Doing all the welding around the outside where the piece is going to heat up fastest is going to be a better idea. And then by the time you get to the welding in the middle, you will have more material surrounding it, which will hold the heat a little bit better. Remember, the material of aluminum holds heat a lot more than you think. I'm always looking at something like this project here where I'm thinking about what areas are gonna be more prone to overheating. And when I'm doing something like this, I'm always doing my planning to do my welding and kind of bounce around with it so I'm not welding all in one area all at once. Another really important thing that I always make sure I do is I let things cool down when it starts getting too spicy. You can see with this project that I also did just a few weeks ago, there was a couple sections where I literally stopped and I let the pieces cool down completely and in some cases using a thing of clean water to cool them down and quench them helped out a ton. Now like this example here, if you are TIG welding towards an open corner, you need to be completely aware that things are obviously are going to get pretty wild and out of control near the end if you aren't careful. Identifying areas like this is a great way to prepare yourself even before you flash up. If you know that you are heading into a hot spot, this almost does all of the work for you. 
as you approach the end of something like this, you can decrease the overall amount of heat that you are using with a foot pedal, especially as you start to work your way towards the end. And you can also increase the amount of filler material that you are using. And another thing that I usually recommend with welding towards an open corner like this is to make sure before you start to leave a big fat tack at the end. This is gonna help to bolster the end and catch some of the heat and prevent things from spilling out and completely blowing out. Like I said, before you even start welding, if you take a look and take careful inventory of where you're going to be heading with your passes, you're going to be able to see open corners like this that might give you trouble, or you're going to see something like this where you have a ton of welding going on. So you can take steps to plan and make sure you prevent overheating. In some cases, if you are able to point your welding away from an open corner, for example, this helps to put your coolest point of your welding pass at the end. You get the idea. And if you know you have plenty more welding to go, but the piece is starting to get real hot, let it cool down. You an air compressor to spray air at it and cool it down. I use my leaf blower. This thing works great and I use it all the time for my work. Or if you're working on multiple joints or multiple projects around your table, swap out the hot ones, grab a cool one, work on that for a bit push it aside and let things cool down in between passes. So again, if you are working on things and you are experienced overheating, I would go through this workflow of troubleshooting. And again, in my hardcover textbook that you can purchase here, there is a complete section on troubleshooting some issues like this. Go hit the link in the description, pick these up before they sell out again. First up, just for the sake of it, I might double check the settings on my machine just to make sure they're not completely jacked. But honestly, again, I am using a foot pedal 100 percent of the time with what I do. That little puppy is controlling pretty much everything as far as your heat input, even if I have way too much amperage programmed on the panel. As I control things with this pedal, I'm not going to have to worry about things overheating as long as I'm paying attention. Just make sure that you're somewhere in the ballpark of what you should be using in relation to the material thickness that you're using. Like we talked about earlier, the next thing and one of the most important things is to make sure you are using the correct amount of filler material for the heat that you are using. Remember, filler is chiller. <laughs> That's pretty good. As you're heading towards an end, heat is obviously increasing. For sure, you might wanna back off the foot pedal a little bit to help control the heat from getting away. But the biggest thing you wanna make sure is that you are keeping up the amount of filler material that you are using. Do not let things fall flat or concave. The next thing that we talked about is making sure that your welding width or the lane that you are welding is not too wide. Obviously, if your welding width or your welding puddle is too wide for the material thickness that you are using, you are gonna have more heat building up in your workpiece than you know what to do with. And like I talked about, even with the perfect amount of filler in relation to the heat that you are using and you're still experiencing like dull, cloudy, grainy looking welds, this would indicate that your welding puddle might be too wide. Decrease this distance with your welding puddle a little bit and I bet that if everything else with your setup and your deal that you are doing is good to go, you're gonna start to see things dial back in nice and shiny again, I guarantee it. Again, with your travel speed, make sure you're not traveling too slow. Excessively slow speed is obviously gonna allow the heat input into your material to build up. And again, obviously everybody has their own kind of like comfort zone for travel speed that they have, but just make sure that if you're experiencing these problems, you address how fast you are traveling. Don't go too slow. Again, if you start to see the cleaning action of your welding area start to diminish or in some cases disappear completely, I would address this troubleshooting list that we just went over. And again, the biggest thing that's gonna help to make sure that this doesn't occur in the first place is to plan accordingly and make sure you don't have any curveballs coming your way that you're gonna have to deal with. Again, if you take note that you are gonna be welding towards an open corner, you can flip the direction of your weld so that in that case, you are gonna be welding away from that open corner, if possible. If you do have to head towards an end of an open corner or joint, make sure you put a good dab of filler material at the end, that's gonna help a ton. This is gonna help to catch a lot of the heat and help you to control the balance between heat and filler a lot easier as you approach the end of a pass. You have something like this funky project right here and you have a ton of welding to do in one area or on one piece, plan your welding so you can bounce around or best case scenario, obviously like we talked about, is take some breaks and allow that sucker to cool down. When you start to get things really lined up with all these details and taking care of any troubleshooting along the way, one of the 
biggest and most immediate things that you can check out right away to get good feedback on how you've done with your balance is smooth and solid cleaning action. We want to see this looking consistent and established from start to finish. We do not want any erratic or ragged looking cleaning action like this example here. We don't like that. And when you get things dialed in perfectly, the cleaning action is going to look consistent and smooth from start to finish. This is one of the biggest things that's going to give you good feedback on this detail. To match this, you're also going to start to see the edges of your welding pass blending in smoothly. This will be the line in between the filler material added and the base material. There's a decent rule of thumb that I teach all my students where if you see really good and consistent cleaning action, you're going to see a really clean and smooth wetted edge between your filler material and your base material and vice versa. If you look at any good weld that has a really good blended edge between these two materials, you're going to notice that the cleaning action is bang on as well. You get the idea. You also want to make sure you have adequate reinforcement. Remember, as we are welding and dealing with heat input, we don't want things to fall flat or concave. We obviously don't want an excessive amount of filler like we talked about earlier, but you do want to make sure that you keep up good and adequate reinforcement with your welding as you travel along. As you step along from step to step, just look for the puddle to bump up each time you add filler. We don't want to see it just kind of doing nothing and falling flat like this here. We want to see the puddle actually get reinforcement with each dab of filler that you add. Flipping things over, you obviously do not want to see any excessive burn through or uneven or excessive penetration. A lot of the time, even when you flip over a plate that's like 3 16 of an inch or 4.6 millimeters, you're going to see a little run of heat input or evidence of heat input on the backside or with thinner stuff like 1 8 of an inch or 3.2 millimeters, you might see some partial penetration on the backside of a plate. A lot of the times you can see penetration come through. You just don't want this to be excessive. You want to see a consistent amount of heat input from the cleaning action and make sure that you use this book to help troubleshoot problems. There's an entire section in here on it. This is something that would have helped me to take care of all these problems when I was first getting going with TIG welding. I took the time to make these books completely by myself. We ship them all from my house here. My wife and I package up each envelope ourselves. This is not an Amazon book. There is no drop shipping involved. We do this from my shop here. You just scan the QR code on the bookmark it comes with. It opens up a complete portal of online lessons that follow the book page by page, chapter by chapter. It's also like a social media site where we all hang out in there and we chat to each other. It's a lot of fun. And check out my website. I also have a ton of free programs that you can take, no charge. I have free PDF downloads you can check out. I have full curriculums. Literally, I take welding school on my website. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James, Bill and Chill. We will talk soon. Peace.